Good morning, welcome to CADEX TV. Today is Monday, August 25th, 2014. My name is Matt Bernat, filling in for Frank Fortunato, who is off today. As always, you can stay tuned to all CADEX News updates by following our Twitter account, at CADEX TV. Once again, that's at CADEX TV on Twitter. Residents of Northern California are bracing for aftershocks after a magnitude 6.0 earthquake hit near Napa Valley Sunday, injuring at least 172 people and causing extensive damage, including fires sparked by burst gas lines in the largest tremor to rock the Bay Area since the magnitude 6.9 Loma Prieta earthquake in 1989. Aftershocks are expected to continue for several weeks, though state geologist John Parrish told the Associated Press that they would decrease in magnitude and it was unlikely that there would be a large follow-up earthquake. Still, he warned people to be careful because buildings that were damaged by the quake are now more susceptible to collapse during the aftershocks. The U.S. Geological Survey says the tremor struck just before 3.30 a.m. Sunday local time, about 10 miles northwest of American Canyon, which is about 6 miles southwest of Napa. Of the 172 patients admitted to the Queen of the Valley Medical Center in Napa, 13 were admitted to the hospital with broken bones and respiratory or cardiac conditions, while the rest were treated and released for less severe injuries. Pacific Gas and Electric said that 2,200 customers were without power as of late Sunday evening and that the utility hoped to have power restored to all customers by Monday morning. A spokesman said that approximately 70,000 customers in Sonoma and Napa counties lost power during the earthquake. A large 6.9 magnitude earthquake has struck a sparsely populated area of central Peru, the U.S. Geological Survey said. There were no immediate reports of damage or injuries, and authorities are still surveying the region, including the Ayacucho Valley, where the earthquake was centered. According to the survey's figures, the quake occurred late Sunday and was centered about 43 kilometers east-northeast of an area called Tambo, about 467 kilometers southeast of the capital of Lima. It had a depth of 101 kilometers. Local media said that the quake was felt in parts of Lima and that in many major cities of southeastern Peru, including Cuzco and Araquipa. Tropical Storm Cristopal doused the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands with heavy rainfall as it moved solely on a northern track in the Caribbean. One man died over the weekend and two others were reported missing when they were caught by, up by swollen rivers on the island shared by the Dominican Republic and Haiti. The U.S. National Hurricane Center in Miami said Cristobal may strengthen into a hurricane later in the week over the open Atlantic. The storm center was expected to curve away from the United States' east coast. Cristobal, which formed as a tropical depression over the Turks and Caicos Islands on Saturday, is the fourth tropical depression of the Atlantic hurricane season. Late Sunday evening, the storm had sustained winds near 45 miles an hour and was located about 105 miles east-northeast of San Salvador, Bahamas. The rain-heavy storm was tracking north at about 5 miles an hour. U.S. forecasters said there should be a decrease in forward speed over the next couple days, meaning Cristobal Center is expected to move near to or east of the central Bahamas through Monday. After thousands of small earthquakes, an Icelandic volcano lying beneath one of the island's largest glaciers began erupting Saturday. Bardar Bunga rumbled to life earlier this week, prompting scientists to warn of an impending eruption that could melt the glacier covering it. So far, the eruption has remained small, but Iceland's airport authority warns that if the eruption melts through the ice, an ash cloud could snarl transatlantic air, just as another volcano did in the spring of 2010. Icelandic search and rescue authorities have ordered the evacuation of hundreds of tourists from the area around Dinju Jokol Glacier, a popular place to sightsee and hike. While the area around Bardarbunga is uninhabited, the volcanic threat has hit the area's tourism industry, with some resort spots having to close a month early, canceling bookings, according to state broadcasting service RUV, as translated by Iceland's English language news site The Grapevine. The danger of a sudden violent eruption prompted Icelandic weather authorities to issue a warning for planes to avoid the area. The aviation color code for this volcano has been changed from orange to red. Twitter users can follow the drama with the hashtag hashtag and some, uh, speaker, some English speakers have expressed fear that Bardar Bunga would send jet engine choking ash high into the atmosphere. Uh, Jason Rabinowitz, an airline industry researcher, tweeted to the entire community to the entire airline industry, good luck. 
Islamic State fighters and Syrian regime troops have clashed in fierce battles that reportedly cost hundreds of lives over Tabqa military airbase, the lost stronghold of the Syrian army in Raqqa province. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reported on Sunday afternoon that fighters were in control of the base in northeastern Syria, but clashes were still taking place. It is the third military base in the area to fall to ISIS since last month. Islamic State ISIS is an al-Qaeda breakaway group that has established what it calls a caliphate across vast swathes of territory straddling the Syria-Iraq border. The group launched its offensive on the Tabqa base last week after several failed efforts to breach the walls. ISIS fighters stormed the air base Sunday, according to the UK-based observatory. The Santa News Agency confirmed that the government had lost the airbase, saying troops are successfully reassembling after evacuating the airport. It is said that the military was still striking terrorist groups, inflicting heavy losses on them. The government had made significant investments in both weapons and manpower to try to hold on to Tabqa, making its fall both a symbolic and strategic blow. The airbase is one of the most significant government facilities in the area, containing several warplane squadrons, helicopters, tanks, artillery, and ammunition. A fast-growing wildfire near the northern California town of Weaverville forced the evacuation of about 150 homes and is threatening 500 additional rever residences, authorities said Monday. The fire, about two miles west of Weaverville, was also threatening 20 businesses and facilities, including the town airport and high school. The fire was sparked Sunday afternoon near Highway 299, the main road into town, and rapidly grew to a little more than one square mile or 658 acres. Crews struggled to contain the blaze because of the steep terrain plus gusty winds and dry conditions that were fueling the flames. Weaverville is at the base of the Trinity Alps Wilderness area in Trinity County in far northern California. The Gold Rush era boomtown is on the National Register of Historic Places. One person was seriously injured in a boat explosion around noon Sunday in Provincetown Harbor. The explosion on a 30-foot cabin cruiser was heard and felt all around the waterfront. The boat was engulfed in flames, the smoke bellowing up into the sky. Two people on board ended up in the water, and the harbor master raced to the scene and brought the two victims to shore. One suffered serious burns and was transfor transported to meet a med flight helicopter at Barnstable Municipal Airport to be flown to the burn center in Boston. Coast Guard personnel towed the boat to a location where the fire could burn itself out. The incident is under investigation. Airline passengers are set to be affected by more strikes in Germany in the coming days as a pay and pension dispute between Lufthansa and its pilots rumbles on. The pilots' union announced Friday that talks with Lufthansa had broken down and that a response would follow immediately. But following a meeting on Monday, it was still unclear whether or not a strike would begin. A spokesman for the union said it's about balancing passengers' interests with the effectiveness of a strike. The union will want to hit Lufthansa with a strike during a busy period to prevent them from finding enough cover. The dispute centers of the pension arrangements of 5,400 pilots in Lufthansa and German wings. Lufthansa wants to raise the retirement age for its pilots from 59 to 65, while the union wants Lufthansa to keep paying transition money to those who retire before 65. The disagreement led to a three-day strike in April, which grounded 3,800 flights and affected 425,000 passengers. After the April strike negotiations started again, but broke down on Friday. A spokesman for Lufthansa said, we, regret, we really regret Cockpit's decision to declare the talks over. That's the news for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back on and tell you. As always, stay tuned to Cadex News on Twitter at TV to follow any and all breaking news updates. Thank you. And